Thanks for stopping by. My name's Bill, and this is Bill's Box of Sound. Now, usually on a Saturday night, about 10 p.m., I do a live stream. It's about an hour long, and I talk about music and records, stuff I've gotten in the past week, news that's happened in the past week or whatever. And I do it live, and there's a chat room, and everybody can stop in and yak anything they want. I react to people in the chat room. Every now and again, we have a guest on the show. But, let's adjust this here. This has been a rather eventful week, but for all the wrong reasons. And I'd like to talk to you about that now. So, welcome to Bill's Box of Sound. And this is not a real live stream. So what I started the show off with is what I usually do. I either play a piece of music that I've already done before, or I improvise a piece of music, or I play a piece of music that I've done and I play guitar over it. I whip out my old acoustic guitar and... And play something over it. Or I play the electric guitar, or I whip out the old keyboard and do something. You know, I do something different every single week. But the show usually begins with an improvised piece of music. So, that's that. So, uh, this show is for Saturday the 10th of August, 2024. And, very important, there's not going to be a show next week. Hang on, and I'll tell you more about it. Okay, next week, which will be August the... Yeti, the 17th. And I should have that committed to memory already. Next week, the 17th, is going to be a Dweezil Zappa concert in Cleveland. I will be watching, hearing, listening, experiencing... Weasel Zappa and his new band, and I just can't wait. So, <clears throat> since I will not be here at the time that the usual live stream happens, there will be no live stream next week. You'll have to wait two more weeks. 
and you're probably even watching this some other date in the future, but that's all right. This particular thing was taped on the 9th of August to be shown on the 10th of August at 10 PM. Okay. So let me tell you about my week. <laughs> uh, first of all, on Monday, I went to see Primus. Let's see. We got a good picture of Primus here. Uh, yeah, actually, here's a good, a good picture of Primus. Well, there's an old picture of Les Claypool, and there's the band. And this is way back in 1989. But this is a bootleg uh, concert of theirs that they have not approved. But then again, there's not a lot of pictures of Primus on their record covers. You know, for example, um, they got this great album called the Brown Album. And that's it. Primus, Brown Album. But if you're familiar with Primus, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Primus played at Blossom Music Center in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. And uh, went out there with uh, my son-in-law, Chris, and we had a good time. Uh, the show was delayed because we had wonderful weather all day long, and we've been having hot, humid weather all week long, and we were dressed for it properly. So we went out there and uh, we ch checked out the uh, the merchandise. There were a couple of cool shirts. I wanted to buy at least a shirt, but I didn't want to have to hang on to it throughout the entire concert. So I said, well, you know, they'll have merchandise after the concert. We can come out here and buy it then on the way out. And then the rain started. Started with just a couple little drops and then it started getting more and more rain and they locked the doors to the concert area. Folks got out their bullhorns and said, we are delaying the start of the concert. We can't let anybody go in because of the chance of lightning and people getting hit. So either go back to your cars or seek shelter and you will be texted as soon as you can go back in. So we hung out underneath um, a little shelter that was next to the merchandise area. Um, I'll show you a little video of that right now that I took. All right, so we're here to see Primus at Blossom Music Center, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, and it's raining, so they're postponing the concert. Thunder. Yeah. Thunder and rain. Uh, did you see thunder? Yeah. No. But there is definite rain out there. You can see it. I mean, th they pulled this at, at the Cure concert. Um, I don't know if it was last year. It was earlier this year. And they were telling people the concert was completely canceled. Go back to your cars. And then... The concert went on as scheduled. No. Just a lot of people off because they went home. So here we are among hundreds upon hundreds of rabid Primus fans and or Coheed and Cambria fans. My name is Yeah, for real. Like, why, why are we not going in there? I'll party yeah. the fucking yeah, no, this is Mud. So, my name is Mud. I want We'll see what happens. <laughs> and then after about 20, 25 minutes or at least, um, the rain subsided and they started to let people in and we got ourselves um, some, some water to drink at the show. And just as we were getting inside of the pavilion at Blossom, music started playing. It was this weird three-piece band 
called Too Many Zoos. It was a dude on a baritone sax, a guy playing a trumpet, and somebody else with a, a, he was wearing a percussion outfit and he was hitting things. There was a bell and some drums and he was providing the rhythm for the whole thing. They played two long tracks that were about, say, 10, 15 minutes each. And that's it. <laughs> and they went off. Then, where is my water? There we go. Then came the opening act, Coheed and Cambria. Now, if you're not familiar with Coheed and Cambria, they're like a progressive metal outfit with a very strong science fiction vibe going on to them. As a matter of fact, almost all of their material is based on this very long uh, four-part trilogy. And I know trilogy should be three, but this is four. And they've even got graphic novels that they sell and things like that. But it's really heavy, hard-driving rock with a lot of uh, notes going on in there. And they had uh, real cool projections and, and, and lights. I've heard them before, and I'm not really into Coheed and Cambria, but I really do appreciate their talent. And they had fans there that knew every note and were singing along and headbanging with, with everything. It was an entertaining show, lasted about, say, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. And so then they left the stage and we got ready for Primus. Uh, in between Coheed and Cambria and Primus, over the PA system, they played the best of Spike Jones. I mean, they played Mild Flame and Beetle Bomb and um, You Always Hurt the One You Love and Defuhrer's Face. All all the big Spike Jones hits. And then the lights went down. Ugh. Now, Primus is one of my favorite bands. I've seen them like six or seven times. And something that they do often is the way that they open up their show is the lights go down and they start playing the music composed by Danny Elfman from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. They play the part where Pee Wee's having a bad dream and there's all of these clowns coming in and it's like circus music, evil, scary circus music. And that's the, the music that they play while they come out on stage, plug in the instruments, get ready to play. And I had been checking out the set lists that uh, were published online for the Primus tours. And I, I was wondering, what are they going to play? They don't have an album that they're promoting. Uh, the latest thing that they put out was a three song EP called Conspiranoid. So I'm wondering what are they going to play? And I checked the internet for the set lists and they play a completely different set of music every night. So they're basically having a good time playing the songs they want to play. And that's wonderful. So as a result, we were treated to songs that we have never, that well, that I have never heard live by Primus before, never even seen them play them in person. And the songs that they played, oh, -ho, they started out with Spaghetti Western. That's off of uh, Frizzle Fry. And then they went into Here Come the Bastards. They played Nature Boy from 
the Pork Soda album, which is one of my favorites. I've never heard them play that live before. And, ah, uh, it was just awesome. Next, My Friend Fats from Animals Should Not Act Like People. They played Frizzle Fry. Then they went into Mr. Kringle. And a couple years ago, Primus toured and they played the entire Rush Farewell to Kings album, their version of it. And at this concert, they played just Cygnus X1 from that album. And somebody came out and sang the high notes at the end. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was one of the guys from Coheed and Cambria because he's got a good high range in his voice. Then they played the, the old Diamondback Sturgeon. Jerry was a race car driver. My name is Mud. And then Les Claypool thanked the audience. He said he, he apologized for the delay because of the rain. And because of curfew reasons, he says, we're just going to play one more song and then we got to go. So they played Winona's Big Brown Beaver and pff, gone. They left the stage. We left as quickly as we possibly could. I went back and the merchandise stand was gone. Absolutely gone. So I could not get a shirt. I wanted to get that yellow shirt that has all three of them as mosquitoes or uh, the, the triangle shirt that had all of them as monkeys. So, sadly... Now, if you go to a Primus show and you feel generous, pick up a shirt, large please, and send it to me, and I'd really appreciate it. But, yeah, Les Claypool, Larry Lalonde, and Tim Alexander, what a great friggin' show that was. Okay, so we went home. Still warm and humid. And the next day was Tuesday. And um, I took my wife to an appointment. And uh, then she said, uh, let's stop at Walmart and pick up some things we need for, uh, for home. No problem. So we go to the old Walmart. We run around the place picking up things. I'll uh, get some toothpaste. Uh, let's see. Oh, we, we need some apples. Get, get those. And... Uh, and, you know, we, we, we need this and that here. Okay. Oh, get, get a loaf of bread. Got a loaf of bread. All right. Ready to check out? Okay, let's check out. So, all of a sudden, we're going through the, the aisles, and we hear this noise outside. Now, when we got there, it was very bright, sunny, and hot, and humid. Then, all of a sudden, we're hearing this noise from up above. Sounds like an intense rainstorm. So, we go to the aisle that peeks out to the parking lot and you can see rain just coming down from the skies practically sideways and my family is texting me on the iPhone saying uh, there's a tornado warning for this area and I'm saying wait a minute we haven't had tornado warnings in this city for near 30 years this is crazy Ah, they never come here. We're not, it's going to be fine. So my wife says, hey, I, I, I want to take a, take a look at the rain. I mean, we're not going to go outside while it's raining, but let's check out so we can stand at the door and watch the rain for a little bit and wait for it to, to, to calm down. So we go there and we start scanning our items through the cash register and bam, lights go out. It's completely dark dark in the place. Some lady comes up and says, um, everybody has to leave. There's a power outage. It's like, wait a second. There's a turn. There's a tornado warning out there. If, if this weather is bad enough to knock the, the, the power out, I don't think you should just send this out into the rain and extreme wind. Then somebody else who had their head screwed on a little bit more straight, had a little bit more security training, said, if there's a tornado warning, everybody's got to go to the middle of the store. Uh, unless you want to leave, then leave right now. But everybody else get into the middle of the store. So we hung out in the middle of the store for a while. Um, 
And then a little while later, the rain sounded like it had subsided. So we went out front. Um, I mean, <laughs> we didn't want to go outside. And uh, so finally it calmed down. I ran out in the intense wind, got the car, went up, picked up my wife. We took off, went home. Trees knocked down on streets all over the place. We had to change our pattern of driving home th three different ways because of trees that had fallen down in the middle of main streets. It was nuts. And most of the traffic lights were out. So we finally got back home, got inside and um, asked uh, my, my, my daughter and my grandson, Roman, who is usually on these live streams, but he's out doing something right now. Anyway, so we said, hey, is uh, was there is there a power outage here or anything like that? It says, well, no, it flickered a couple times, but that's it. So we thought nothing of it. So the rest of the day went by fine. The, the lights flickered a little bit. We had to unplug the washing machine because it was clicking and stuff like that. Uh, and Next morning, I woke up about mm, 8.30, almost 9 o'clock. And my wife's sitting there with her laptop saying, the internet just went out just before you got up. No internet. And I'm thinking, oh crap, what are we going to do? So, all week, there's been no internet. And this is the reason why. Um, they're saying we're going to get our, our internet back tonight, but I don't really believe them. So as a precaution, I'm taping the show ahead of time and putting it up for instant premiere at 10 p.m. so that you folks have a show to watch, even though I don't have access to internet. And I'll be uploading this at a friend's house. <laughs> Crazy, 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 crazy. As Jello Biafra says in Chemical Warfare. So that's what's going on with that. Um, and in music news, or that is record news, last week, hold on a second. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Yeah, last week, um, I told you about the ZZ Top boxed set of the first five albums that came out via Rhino Hi-Fi because they're part of Warner Brothers and the original albums that originally came out on London Records are now on Warner Brothers. So they put that out. I showed my original records and showed that I had purchased uh, the only other album that I did not have from the original London catalog, which was ZZ Top's first album. Um, I purchased that and showed it. And in this past week, this $200 boxed set of ZZ Top albums, five records, has sold out. But something else has happened... Previously on this show, in weeks past, because I've been doing this for over 90 weeks now, Rhino Hi-Fi released, back at the, sa at the same time that they released Devo's Freedom of Choice on Rhino Hi-Fi, they released this album. Hang on. The first Black Sabbath album, they released that on Rhino Hi-Fi, Specially mastered by Kevin Gray, plated at RTI, pressed by Optimal in Germany, it purported to sound wonderful. I'm really happy with this Chris Bellman cut, or actually, this may have been a, uh, a Ron McMaster cut that came out in, I think, uh, 2010 or 2011. I was very happy with this, so I said, nope, because... By the time you get done buying the Rhino Hi-Fi 
and getting the shipping and the tax put on, you end up spending more than 50 bucks for a record. They say it's only 40 bucks, but yeah, 10 more bucks to get it to you and the taxes. So I said, nah, forget it. And sure enough, it came out, people were just losing it over how good it sounded. There's many, many videos that I've watched and you've probably watched as well of people comparing the different versions of the first Black Sabbath album. And they're saying that this one is most likely the very best over, even over the European Vertigo Swirl versions, which have a different song at the beginning of side two. So that sold out and I'm saying, okay, no problem. I missed out on that one. I, you know, I got a version I like anyway, but people were saying this new version is even better. Just today, Friday, they announced that they were making 5,000 more copies of the Rhino Hi-Fi version of the first Black Sabbath album. Same price. Same price. And they are not going to be individually numbered. So this is a non-numbered pressing, but it's the same record. They're making 5,000 more of them. Go to rhino.com and you can get yours. It's the unnumbered version of the first Black Sabbath album. So get that while you can. I have a very strong feeling that's going to sell out as well. So that is that. So all this week, I've been listening to music without the internet. And it just happened to me that most people nowadays are dependent on the internet to listen to music because they stream things. Now, there's a very good chance that if you're watching this show, that you're not dependent on streaming for your music needs. You've either got CDs or records, or you've got a lot of files on your computer that are not dependent on a server someplace out in who knows where. And it was kind of nice to be able to sit back, listen to a few albums, pull up some old favorites. I listened to Emerson, Lake and Palmer's Tarkas. I listened to Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick. I listened to, um, what else did I listen to? Elton John's Honky Chateau. A few other things that I, that I listened to. And I pulled some songs at random off of my hard drive and just played them through my stereo into my headphones late at night. And no interruptions from emails. I wasn't able to access Discogs or Wikipedia to research the album I was listening to. I was just forced to sit back, slap the old headphones on, and just be very happy with the stuff that I was listening to. Oh, I, I had a refreshing beverage as well. That was fun. It was great. So, that's how the week went. And I know that I'm only at about, say, what, 35, uh, 40 minutes right now. But on my regular live streams, I've got the chat room egging me on and asking me questions. So there's lots more things to talk about and, I, and the dialogue with you, the audience. So if you like this, I want to very strongly advise you. Oh, here, here's another record I was listening to. Utopia, Adventures in Utopia. But you might want to check out my album. Meh! By Spudlock. It's available on Bandcamp under spudlock.bandcamp.com. Check it out. It's available on vinyl. It's also available on download for a lesser price. Or if you just want to check it out and listen to it, you can check it out free of charge. Just listen to it. Decide whether you want to buy it or not. 
I would really appreciate if it if you purchased this album and helped me recoup my investment in it. It's some music that uh, my, a, a friend and I recorded between 1988 and 1992. And in my opinion, it's a pretty bitchin' album. It's kind of strange, kind of weird, but a lot of fun. Also, hit the like button, please. Subscribe if you have not already subscribed to this channel. And I really do appreciate all of you who tune into these shows now and again. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I had a great time. I hope you did too. Uh, please come back again. And thank you for listening to Bill's Box of Sound. Sadly, we're not going to have another piece of music at the end, which we usually have during the uh, live stream. I mean, well, what the hell? I'll, I'll pull out my guitar and make up some chords that I can't see. That's it. Thank you again for watching. Good night. Go listen to some music. <laughs>